Hello. Today we're going to do a video about garage sale pickups, estate sales, and um, some vintage football helmets. So my name is Will and I used to come on here and do videos about boxing but this time around we're going to do videos about everything from sports to you know estate sales, auction, and garage sale pickups. So the first video I'm going to put out today is a specific uh, video about NFL and WFL game use helmets. Um, they were obtained at a estate sale amongst other things and I'm going to show you five of the items I got out of there and I might as well share the prices with you and what they've been estimated they're being worth by Heritage Auctions because that's where I'll be submitting them if I can't get what I want on the street on Craigslist and eBay. So, let's get to it. First one. Um, I've done a lot of research and it, there's just so many little things with these helmets to know exactly what they are, whose they are, and everything in between. But the first one is a Rydell Crawlite 2 helmet. And it was from the Atlanta Falcons. I believe this is a 1966 helmet, but correct me if I'm wrong, here, because I know they did have the gold um, stripe here. But the reason I feel like this is a 1966, it has the suspension too, which is the Falcons' first year of existence, is because it has the number 48 in it, which was this player, Angela Koa. I don't even know that's how he pronounced his name. I've never heard of him. But he played for the Bears and he played for the Falcons just one year. And that was in 1966. And that's why I believe this is his helmet. It has his number in here. And it's definitely the real deal. And that's the only number I could uh, play or listen to that number in those years that I could come up with. Especially for the model of helmet it is and the suspension. So I'm assuming it's his. So um, I got this at an estate sale, a guy who owned a sports bar. And I, it's a funny story. I walked in, and I got five helmets there. And I walked in, and I was um, I thought these were toy helmets. Cause I don't, I'm a basketball fan. I don't know anything about NFL game use hel helmets. But now I do because I do my research about everything new I uh, come across. And um, the funny story is, you know, I walked in there. And I, uh, another helmet, it was a WFL Detroit, or uh, no, it was the Florida Blazers. And I was like, what is this? You know, this one looks real, the WFL, so I'll get it. So I brought that one home, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is worth at least 500 uh, to 1,000, you know? But I'm going to say 500. So now I start thinking, like, Jesus, if this is real, you know, all the other ones are real, why did I leave them? You know, what an idiot. So I go back there, and uh, I pick up. Here's, here's the Florida Blazers one that I first left there with. Suspension. So I go back there. So this is the one I first got. I go back there and then I proceed to pick up the Falcons one. The Chicago Fire WFL helmet. The mouth guard. This is uh, his number in here is number 25 I think it's this guy Greg Stemrick and then he went out to play for the NFL and become a pro bowler with the chewed up mouth guard and the face mask and this Kansas City helmet so I go back and pick these three up and I believe this is uh yeah like I said this is the Greg Stemrick helmet uh from the Chicago Fire and then the Angelo Koa and then I get this helmet and as you see it has the uh newer uh, things on it because obviously this came off it like they easily come off I, I guess and uh, someone wanted to put put it back on so they put these new things on it you know I'm really unsure what year this is um, so people at Heritage think it's a you know they haven't got to see it yet but from the pictures they say it's a 1960s Chiefs helmet um, the suspension is ripped out and I really don't know, you know. I don't know what year it's from. There's no player indicator. It says Kansas City right there. 
but I don't know what it is, whose it is, what it is, what year is it from. So I really don't know the value. If it wasn't from when they're AFL years, you know, it could be worth big money, but who knows because there's no exact player that it's linked to. So if you could help me out with this, guys, that'd be much appreciated. But, you know, then this guy's house. He had nothing but stuff from the 60s. You know, I got some posters that are worth a couple hundred bucks apiece. I got a baseball bat by Wally Moon. My buddy got a bunch of 1960s toys. I mean, everything in this guy's house was 60s. So um, I go back and get these three helmets. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then there was another helmet that was let, that was just like, I, I swear it was fake. So I leave another helmet behind. I, uh, I've been there twice now. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I shouldn't have left the helmet behind. This is the helmet right here. You know, I was like, this has to be some type of toy play helmet because it looks spray painted and it's got these cheap looking NFL stickers on it. You know, when I came home for the second time and I did my research, I found out this is a um, Pro Bowl helmet from the 60s because they used to spray paint the helmets for like three or four years. And it happens to be a Green Bay Packers one. They forgot to take the decals off. You can see it underneath there. And it happens to be Donnie Anderson's from the Packers. So here I am. It's a couple player number indicators. Here I am um, for the third time going back there, leaving the most valuable helmet, um, I believe, behind, praying that it's still there, you know. And reluctant to me, uh, it is still there. And I grabbed this for the third time. So, you know, all together... You know, this this was thirty five bucks. The uh, the WFL ones were like four to forty five and fifty, and the other two helmets were like thirty five bucks a piece. The NFL ones, so you know, I spent like two something, you know, and you know, I think I got about five hundred a piece of the WFLs, maybe uh, a grand for the Atlanta one at least, and um, the Kansas City. I don't know. Depending on what it is, maybe like grand, maybe more. I don't know. And the Donnie Anderson one, I've had offers on it. You know, I I say it's at least worth a grand. You know, I, I've I, on a high range, two grand. You know, just depending on the collector and who wants it. But it really is the most in, just beautifully stamped and intact helmet I've seen from doing my research. It has all the stickers in it, original stickers in it. Factory stickers. There's like three. Um. And then it also has these stamps on the inside for, I don't even know what the year is, 65, I think. But this was worn in 68 by Donnie Anderson. I don't know how long he wore the Packers helmet before then, but it is his Pro Bowl helmet. So, you know, if anyone else has any input about this stuff um, or any more knowledge that they could give me, it'd be much appreciated, especially about this Chiefs helmet. And... Yeah, you know, I'll uh, keep posting videos about anything I find from garage sales, estate sales, because that's what I do. I buy and sell things for a living, the good things I keep. I'm a Bulls collector, so of course I keep the Bulls stuff. But if, um, you know, if you got any uh, requests, if you want to buy any of these, I'll take offers on them before I submit them all to Heritage, because I'm submitting a bunch of stuff uh, to Heritage, uh, along with my buddy, probably about 10 to 20 grand worth of stuff. So that's not till November. So let me know and, you know, start subscribing to me because I'm going to put out a video every week at least. I'm going to put out a few right now just to get going. All right. Thank you for watching.